Well, this is another bayonet that was found in the J.T. Hayes collection that was picked up off of the battle at Gettysburg in 1863. This bayonet has been in the family ever since, handed down through the generations, and now it is here with us today. And this is a, a very well-known bayonet for the time. It's a pattern 1856 Enfield bayonet, and it was used by both sides of the conflict in the Union and the Confederacy, and it was a very, very popular bayonet for its time because they imported thousands and thousands and thousands of these type of rifles that provision this bayonet. As you can see, it's a little bit salty, just as it should be. It was picked up off of the battlefield and it's been in storage ever since. We haven't tried to clean it or preserve it or put any kind of polish or anything on it. We're presenting it exactly the way that it came to us. So this is the, uh, the Enfield bayonet. Now, interesting about this bayonet, it's about 28 inches long overall. It has a 22 and 3 quarter inch blade uh, what's called a Yadagon blade. It has a bird's head pommel, and it has a leather checkered grip that I'm gonna show you in a, in, in a minute. Uh, so let's take a look at this bayonet. Um, first of all, whenever you're handling uh, bayonets or swords with leather scabbards, make sure that you never pull them out like this because the leather is very soft, and I've seen them just split right in half when that's done. So always take this bayonet, up like so, pull it up straight, oh, and it's been in there for a long time, there you go, like this, okay, and then keep this flat, scabbard flat so it doesn't break, okay, so this is the bayonet, it's got this long what you call a Yadagon style blade, it was kind of founded by the French and then the English patterned, and, and, and there was a lot of countries throughout the world that kind of copied this blade style. It's truly imposing. I mean, if you could imagine that at the end of a rifle coming at you, it would be a pretty scary thought. The tip of this has kind of been broken off. Don't know exactly how that happens, but it's, it's kind of flattened out. Sometimes we refer to this as the screwdriver tip option, but that's kind of a, an inside joke in the industry. But this is uh, just as found. There is one marking on the top of the, the back strap here, the spine. It's really hard to see. It's a number. It's probably like an issue number. Could be a date. I would have to take a little steel wool and oil and kind of to try to see exactly what that says. It also has some markings actually on the top of the pommel of this. Again, really hard to see. You would probably have to take a little bit of steel wool. It's probably just a serial number or maybe an inspector mark or something like that. Now, the Confederate issued ones um, had different markings on them. Sometimes they were marked on the scabbard. Sometimes there were big engraved uh, numbers across the bolster here, but this one doesn't have any. This one obviously saw a lot of use in the battle. You can see exactly what condition it is. This is what we call kind of like almost relic condition, probably a little bit better than relic condition because it actually has the original scabbard. If you can see, the leather grip is kind of a little bit toasty, but it's amazing that it's actually a survivor. It has survived since 1863 with the original scabbard, just like that. Now the scabbard is actually in pretty decent shape. It has some crazing. Uh, a little bit of dryness that you can see. The drag and the throat, which is this, is loose, okay? This is exactly how it came. I don't see any markings on it whatsoever, but it's all there and it's all present. And what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna put this down in the scabbard too, too, too tight, okay? Because uh, we don't want anybody to pull pull the scabbard out and snap the scabbard in half. So I'll kind of leave it like that and see. What happens over the years is the, the age, the, these get dry, they dry out and they shrink. So obviously it doesn't have the fit that it would originally. But the bayonet was the tool of the trade for the infantrymen. Um, there are stories after stories at the Battle of Gettysburg uh, about bayonet charges. Uh, there was a famous one on um, Little Round Top with jo Joshua Chamberlain. He won the Medal of Honor for that. 
Of course, Pickett's charge, so we're not exactly sure where on the battlefield this was picked up, but this was picked up on the battlefield by J.T. Hayes in 1863, and it's brought to you all the way down through the generations and presented for the first time since 1863 right here on Rare Collectibles TV. This is item M1384, a Saber bayonet for only $695. Again, that's item M1384, a Saber bayonet for the collector-friendly price of just $695.